Welcome to A Photographer's Life. The channel that takes you behind the curtain into the world of professional architectural photography. Join us now for a special episode with some of America's premier architectural photographers. Today's broadcast is a special presentation by Michael Young, founder of Shared Construction Content. In this meeting Michael explains his company's unique service which streamlines the process of multi-party licensing. This meeting is hosted by AIAP Director Alan Blakely. We hope you enjoy the show. If you do, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. Now, on with the show. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to this AIAP Zoom meeting. We have a special presentation today from Michael Young, who's from Shared Construction Content. I sent out an email earlier this week with the invitation to this meeting, which should have given you a little bit of background information about Michael and his company. Um, Michael is uh, no stranger to business success, and this is his latest venture. And uh, I spoke with him um, a couple of weeks ago about this and then uh, followed up recently with him and um, his new service, this uh, shared construction content company, I think offers some unique opportunities for architectural photographers. And so th this meeting will generally be a presentation about Michael, who's uh, going to control the, the content basically. And um, Michael, I'm wondering, would you like us to open up a chat window for this um, this meeting as well as we get started? Would that uh, be helpful to you to see questions and comments or are you okay to be interrupted slightly? Uh, let's go ahead and open up a chat window, but I also don't mind being interrupted. Okay. Not a problem. All right. I'm not going to give you too much background um, about what Michael is offering, but um, to me, this sounds like something that would be advantageous to those of us, which are all of us actually, that do multi-party licensing. And Michael has approached this from a very interesting standpoint and offering this service. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Michael Young. And um, Michael, uh, thank you again for being here. We look forward to hearing from you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Alan, for having me. I really appreciate all the conversations we've had over the last couple of weeks. All right. Uh, my name is Michael Young. Um, I'm the founder and principal software engineer at Share Construction Content. We've been building the platform for about the last three years and publicly launched it about six months ago. Um, it's in a beta version right now, but we're getting more and more users on it across the globe. We've got users in Europe, Australia, here in the US, Canada. And we're really trying to solve some real problems that architectural photographers have as projects get more complex, as contractors, architects, interior designers, their subcontractors are requesting more and different requirements from each of us. And of course, layering split costs into that. Um, the prime function of the platform is split cost, but it is also heavily, heavily influenced by the licensing that is around that. In order to understand why we're doing this, there's a couple of things you have to know about me personally um, to realize you know, this is really more of a calling for me rather than just a business. Um, at STC, we believe that when you bring people together, great things happen. And that's what architectural photography is. That's what architecture is as a whole. It's you're bringing people into these spaces, architectural photography, we're photographing these spaces, we're influencing the next generation of architecture and the next generation of how we bring people together, family, friends, college, academic, et cetera. And so for me personally, I've always brought people together. It's been a natural talent of mine ever since I was a kid. In college, I ran the largest clubs on my college campus. Um, I ran the outdoors club, which had over 500 members. It was 20% of the student body went on a trip. I ran the ski and snowboard club where we'd go all over the world, go skiing and snowboarding. After college, my friend Melanie is a friend, right? So it's not business related, but she really puts it best. Four out of her five bridesmaids and her husband, she met through me. So basically, I've got this knack for getting the right people in the right room at the right time, and great things typically happen afterwards. So bringing together, it's, it's why I'm here. It's what I do in life, and my work in business is no different. Share construction content is, is literally, it embodies that and what it does, it brings people together. So for me, I've always had a massive love and passion for architecture. My 20-page high school thesis was on the advent of the New York skyscraper. 
my family's been in construction and architecture ever since I was born. And then everybody who knows me knows, oh, Michael, SCC, this just makes so much sense for you. You bring people together, which literally is what SCC does every single day. We actively bring people together and we do that to increase your revenues, to help your construction companies out, to further architectural photography as a whole. So SCC brings everyone together and we help your business. Has, my background's in fashion um, and I ended up building all the software systems out for some major fastest out fashion houses. Uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olson, BCBG, Max Azaria. Um, and I ended up at 26 working for a guy named Ben Malka. Ben, he's the executive chairman of a company right now called Recover. It's a $4 billion company. He was a CEO of BCBG Maximera, which is a $2.2 billion company with 30,000 employees. At 26, he hired me and I worked with me from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., six days a week with a team of six to custom build and manage all of the software systems for a global enterprise that he had with over 650 employees. This stuff is my bread and butter. I do this stuff all day, every day. I've been doing it for the last 10, 15 years. We decided to go in and work in the world of split cost and licensing because it is a massively, massively underserved area. Um, architectural photography is easily the number one photography type business. If you want a stable set of income, if you want very, very good clients, if you want to be able to build a brand around it, you don't get that in weddings. You don't get that in portrait. It's really the one, it's the one that matters most. And yet, for the hundreds of photography specific software platforms that are out there, no one's solving the real problems of architectural photography. Split costs aside, just even the licensing side of it and people having different requirements on licensing, there's no company that said, hey, we just want to focus. We don't care about portrait. We don't care about wedding. We only care about architectural photography and the workflow that comes with architectural photography, that specific workflow. And it's, every, it's evident everywhere you look. When you look at people talking about photography and architectural photography, the top four things they're talking about is gear, licensing, post-production, and split cost projects. But no one, not a single of the companies out there, Pixie Set, HD Photo Hub, REO, any of those guys are handling all of this stuff in one place and taking care of it. And you know, I see it every single day. I get emails all the time. Hey man, this is a nightmare split cost project, can you please help me? I have so many questions about this. It's a really complicated scenario. What can I do? My brain just exploded because there's four or five different houses they want shot. It's one architect, but each of those particular properties has different subcontractors and GC, et cetera, et cetera. How do I handle this? And so from our perspective, there is an enormous gap in the market uh, where on the bottom, we have our low hanging fruit and the fruit that you guys grab off the ground, which is the good stuff, you know, got super heavy. So it fell down. So on the bottom, you've got all of your clients, which are the big three, right? Architect, GC, interior designer, maybe a subcontractor, right? And then at the top though, you've got all the stuff that you can get way after the fact. So you have your infringement platforms that are going after, you know, typically one license or one small problem that you experience so you're you know you're kind of it's high it's up there it's super hard to get to and we're you know the infringer platforms are bringing that to you but the reality is it's really not the greatest thing in the world it's not the greatest experience that gen the infringer platforms generally create some animosity and some frustrations and they definitely don't turn the people who they're pursuing for infringements into clients at the end of the day and so from our perspective, we saw an enormous gap in the market between your current photography clients and the current way that you do business and the clients that you're working with on infringement or going after for infringement, but everything else in between the other 30 companies that had a hand in building a building, the other 90 companies that it's an enterprise construction project that had a hand in building the building, all of that in here, which is a little bit too high just to reach, but it's not out of reach if it's facilitated. All of that in here from our perspective is completely underserved and left on the table. And you know, the reality 
for us to be able to actually get to those clients in the middle there is that it's too difficult to go after every single one of them. There's too much work. They all have different needs. There's lots of people that you need to talk to. There's lots of decision makers that you need to get in front of and be able to have conversations with and say, hey, you know, who's the right person to license these images? And so what we realized after doing this for the last three years is we solve lots of problems in legal work. We solve lots of problems in invoicing. We solve problems in split cost calculations. We solve problems in licensing. But what we really do, what we really solve is we need every single project, which is just one scope of work with typically a set of 25 images or 30 images, however many they are. We need that one project to feel as if it only has one client, right? So that you only have to set it up once and then you can just send it out to everybody. And so it feels as if it only has one client, even though it's fulfilling the unique needs and requirements of multiple companies. And so we needed to take all that heavy lifting of, you know, if you're trying to sell to 20 or 30 companies, you'd have to go out and sell to 20 or 30 companies. We wanted to take all that heavy lifting and make it incredibly easy. And we do the thing. We do this through a thing called universal links in order for you to go ahead and sell and prospect all of those 20 and 30 companies that kind of are out of reach before. And so the way that we see ourselves is we've got your photography clients, you know, that you're already working with. We have SDC and our universal links, helping you get everything in the middle of the tree with a little bit of a ladder. And then we've got the infringement platforms in their rightful place if you must go after things at the, you know, a year later and whatnot. So what's in it for you guys? If we solve this gap, right? So if we solve this gap for you, you're making significant revenue with minimal work. You're spending way less time than you ever would have to prospect 20, 30, 90 companies. We're giving you copywriting and legal protection, and we're giving you better relationships. When you start getting into here, and you're doing infringements and you're going after people, there's a reason that these are all kind of a little bit brown and gray and not very attractive because you're ruining your relationships with all these other companies that you may have had an opportunity to go ahead and sell to. From our perspective, we can bring you these clients here in the middle. We can get them onboarded for you. It's going to make you a ton more money. It's going to spend, you're going to spend a lot less time doing it. We're going to get you legally protected in the right way by every single quarter, pushing out all of your copywriting, right? So pushing out all of your copyright registrations, and we're gonna help you form better relationships. And we go ahead and we do this through two ways. We do it through passive and active. Right now, infringement platforms and your photography clients are pa passive. They come to you guys, you wait for infringements, and we don't actively go after people. With SCC and our universal links, we are actually and actively going after all the companies that may have participated in a particular project. So this is a project that we did out in Utah, and it had a total of 93 companies that were participating on the project. And then we go out and we find all of the usernames and details, phone numbers, emails, contact information, LinkedIn addresses, and we start prospecting all 300, 400 different people from each of the different companies to let them know about the images that you've created and their licensing options and how we might be able to help them better their business. We run this and we manage it through managed systems. We use Salesforce and Sales Loft. Salesforce and Sales Loft are basically cadence systems and automated email systems and text messaging or LinkedIn systems where we're able to load up specific cadences, conversations, um, specific cadences and conversations that we can prospect people with, right? So we load up a, we're able to load up a flow. We add somebody to this flow and we're able to send them out emails, emails, phone calls, text messages, LinkedIn messages. And the way that we do it is every single time we're reaching out to somebody, we're providing them a set of value. We're not just saying, hey, here are the images. Do you want to license these images? We're providing them a set of value of like, hey, here are these images. But by the way, you're receiving X, Y, and Z discount on these images. Here are the images. And we've given you two different licensing options that you can choose from. 
one that gives you a lot of autonomy, one that gives you a minimal autonomy and it's a little bit cheaper. We link all these people back to sales pages, right? So we basically say, hey, we can help you. We can help your building. We can go ahead and get all these other companies on this particular project. These are the people who are participating in the project. Go ahead and join them and license the images, okay? So basically, from our perspective, we fill this gap with software, with services and people who are able to send out and research contact lists and send out uh, details and information, and then providing people an easy way to go ahead and purchase their images and check out, which are facilitated by SCC portals. So the way that this works in SCC is for your current clients, you guys have pre-principal photography right now, right? These are your current clients. You go after your current clients, you, you grab them way, way in the beginning, right when the project is getting started. And then where we come in at SCC is we have links that we can send out. We can send them out pre-principal photography before you have any images. And that generally typically gets the less responses, right? People are sometimes curious about what the price might be, but we really don't get any significant responses until we send out post principal photography galleries with pricing and people routed into the right services and routed into the right licensing etc cetera, etc cetera. and then after the fact you know a year later is when you have your infringement so the way that we generally work is you do everything that you're doing right now with your current photography clients nothing changes Ahead of they they email you, they text you, they you give them a scope of work. They tell you, hey, I've got two or three people I want to onboard into the the cost share into the project. We onboard them, we get them all signed up. Then once we've got the original couple of clients signed up, we'll ask the architect or the GC or whomever is the person you had the best relationship with, please send this universal link out to all of the clients, right, and all of your partners, and see who let us know who's interested in high end architectural photography. We'll typically get two, three, or four emails back from people who've expressed interest. They'll get a quote. We'll have that on file. We know what they selected. Then we can follow up with those guys at the rate that you want us to follow up. We can be aggressive or not aggressive. And then after the fact, so you go out, you do principal photography, you either get proofs, which you could deliver and send out to everybody, or you could just wait until all the final images are done and you could send out the final images to everybody. Um, and again, that's also a universal link. So an email goes out from the architect or from the GC to everybody who participated in the project. Hey guys, here are the images. Please click this link if you're interested in, in licensing a couple of them. They go through an easy to use flow. They see what their price is. They see what their uh, what images they have an opportunity to select are and any split cost savings that they might be able to, to get at that moment in time. Okay. So we're going to start with a little bit of a demo, um, and we're going to try to move relatively quickly of how this actually works in this particular timing setup, right? So inside of SCC, I'm in here. I'm in one of our, I'm in a testing environment that we've got, and I'm ready to create a project. Hi, Alan. It's for you. In order for you to create a project inside of SCC. It's as simple as this, create project, choose the type of project you'd like to select. So create a fee, editing, licensing. Key in an address, but it's not required if you'd like to. Let us know how many payments, one payment or two. You can set your deposits, doesn't matter to us. You could do 25% deposits, 75% after the fact, create the project, okay? We've now created the project, that's how quick it is. This is a project that has a $2,500 licensing fee, $1,000 for editing, and $2,500 um, for creative fee. You can send a link to the client to onboard, right? So if you know who the client is or you don't know who the client is and you need to get more information from them, you could send them a link. You'd be like, hey, sign up for your project here, or you can go ahead and set them up now. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and send them a link. So the client gets the, hey, here's your email. They say, I, they declare I'm the architect. And obviously if they declare the wrong thing, we can always change it and be like, um, you're actually a different kind of person. You are supposed to have a higher price or whatever it might be. They can sign up and say full day creative fee. 
right? We can do full day creative fee, half day creative fee. You create all of these settings. All of the words on this page are words that you go ahead and type in. And for this particular client, we're gonna go ahead and serve them a $100 licensing fee, right? 10 units, if they go ahead and type in six and they try to continue, they got an error message. Nope, you must choose a minimum of X number of images. We go ahead and type that in, type 10 units. Then they choose their licensing. I apologize, the last one was editing. And then they choose their licensing. For this particular client, we're gonna serve a $350 license. This is the title of the license. Here's some abridged details of the license. Obviously not all the details of the license. We pull that up later. And we say it's $3,500. So this particular client for Alan, owner test, they want a full day creative fee of $2,500, architectural photography at $1,000. And they wanna go ahead and use this license at $3,500. Great, $7,000 quote. They can go ahead and proceed here by typing in a credit card or putting in a bank transfer. Or they could also come down here and explore cost savings. Right, So they see what their cost is without sharing. Non-shared cost, $100, et cetera, et cetera. Build your own scenario, two units, right? So if they wanna go ahead and update this, at two units, they're getting 25% savings, saving $1,750. If they go ahead and type in three units, they're saving 2,300 and they're saving 33%. Four, five, and it goes up and up and up. Again, as you get into 10, et cetera, et cetera, you get diminishing returns. But the point is our sweet spot is we like to get five to six on the front end. If you wanna see all the math and details about this, they're able to expand this and they can see, oh, the creative fee is eligible to be shared by everybody. You know, it's mandatory. If you're joining this cost share, you must share the creative fee. The architectural photography and editing is can be shared. It's optional. So you can, only the people who select this image that they want it, are the only people who will share the cost of that particular image. Licensing is never shared, okay? They can go ahead and see the breakouts here, okay? Full day creative fee divided by five units and it prints out all the components. So always shared, can be shared, never shared. We have analytics on this where we can see if people are actually expanding this or not. I would say probably 35% of people expand this to take a look. Whereas everybody else just goes here and they click make selections here and they go, okay, I'll say 38%, I'm good. All right. So for this particular client, we'll go ahead and proceed. They'll go ahead and add their first name. They'll add an address for their company or their, their company information and details. And then they go and they sign a legal document. We print a full on DocuSign. It's got a master services agreement. And if it's their first time signing a master services agreement, they have to sign it every time afterwards, they don't have to re-sign their master services agreement unless a new version is issued. And they go ahead and they say, okay, I'm, I agree to the master services agreement. I agree to the services I chose. So creative fee, editing and licensing and done. Okay, now they can go ahead and they can help other people join this call share by clicking this link and sending the universal link out or they could go back to their quote doesn't matter to us. Okay, so I'm coming back here and I'm now back as Alan, I'm pretending to be Alan again. And let's say this is a week or two later, we've had some conversations with the particular client and we've said, okay, we are now ready to send out a universal link to your clients. We want, you know, dear architect, dear general contractor, you wanna save money, we wanna help you save money, let's send this universal link out. So we would send them this universal link and typically a pre-written email. It's like, hey, we would, you know, dear everybody who participated on X, Y, and Z construction project, we're doing high-end architectural photography photos. If you are interested in joining and splitting the cost of these photos, go ahead and click this link. So this link will go ahead and it'll get sent out and it'll say, oh, you wanna join the cost share. You can customize all this language. And they'll say, I am the marble fabricator, right? So they'll say I'm the marble company. They'll agree that I have to purchase a minimum of six images, right? If they try to type in three, they'll get an error message. So they'll say, yep, I got to go ahead and type in six. They'll go ahead and proceed. They agree to a license. Now notice that this particular customer has a much different license than the original 
architect. It's a much smaller license, right? It's much smaller there. It's only a hundred dollars for the license and total total. It's a license that meets their requirements. They don't need something for editorial submission. Only the architect does, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, with a license, actually use it for editorial. They'll go ahead and continue and they'll immediately see that they're getting some cost savings right here. They'll see that their creative fee has been cut in half and they'll see that their cost of editing has also been cut in half. This gets actualized after actual images have been selected and they'll see that their licensing is $100 a unit times six units. They will see the SCC creative fee because we start charging a creative fee if a project becomes a split cost project. Okay, again, now they can also go and run their own scenarios. If they wanna see what happens with four, with five, with six, we also show them the price comparison as if they were to do this themselves, right? So the architect is paying, was paying $7,000 to do this. Well, we don't, we want the smaller company, Marvel company to know, hey, if you really want to do this project and you're doing it yourself, it would have been $77,000. So we show them their cost savings based off of what the total cost of the project was, okay? So they can go ahead and they can click proceed and they execute their legal documents, master services agreement, scope of work agreement. And this particular client gets a new agreement. Because they're joining a cost share, they receive not only the master services agreement and the exhibit A, they also ex receive an exhibit C, which is our shared services agreement. Okay, and the shared services agreement says, hey, you're gonna split the cost of the creative fee by $2,500, okay? as new and additional items for like editing and for um, image selections get added, they would also split the cost of those as well. All right, so again, success, we're done. You can go ahead and close this or you're allowed to go ahead and return to the quote, All right? So they could return to their quote if they wanted to. So now where we're at is here. So where we're at is we finished the main thing. This is all pre-principal photography. You have delivered to your original clients, sign up for this particular project for pre-principal photography, and then SCC has delivered. Um, SCC has allowed additional people to sign up through Universal Links pre-principal photography. Um, you will have noticed that they were served different licensing options for the additional users that were signed up by uh, Universal Links. And you can set those um options by each and every single role actually i'll just pull one up real quick so this to us is how we do some routing it's fairly in depth but we go ahead and do this for you you never have to set this up and basically you'll see here that the architect was routed into licensing of portfolio shots rate per image 25 units 25 units 25 units Right, so this was, they just have one option for the architect. But everybody else in this particular project was routed into client use and award submission, client use and one editorial use or unlimited editorial uses. We select the minimums Oh, you must choose 25 as the architect and the GC and the interior designers. And then if you're the landscape architect, you choose six. If you're the lighting designer, you choose six. If you're the end six, except make these be whatever you want. You got them into any type of license option you want to have. Okay. So that's where we're at. Now, but let's go ahead and let's say that, oops, excuse me. Let's say that we are done photography. And we are now, we are now delivering. Uh, we are now delivering um, images to everybody, right? So we'll go back to the portal. So we're back to Alan again. I'm pretending to be Alan all over again. Okay, we're with this project. Sorry, the zoom is a little bit in the way. You can see that we've gone ahead and we've delivered, we have uh, we have two, two particular uses of this project. We have owner test as the architect and we have PN something something test as the marble stone fabricator. We can go ahead and issue their invoices if we would like to. We could have done this beforehand as a deposit, uh, but we can do it at any time, doesn't matter. And so now Alan's ready to go ahead and deliver. 
we'll go ahead and create a batch of images. We can upload some watermarked images first. We'll put them into a gallery. We can upload a set of images that aren't watermarked to appear on the legal documents. And if you have your high, res high resolution and web resolution final deliverables, you could also upload a set of images as the actual deliverables to be delivered and downloaded when all is said and done. Okay, so now we've got two particular clients. We have the architect and we have the Marvel company. We're gonna go ahead and deliver them some images. You can add minimums, maximums. So if they purchase like a package with 25 images, you could say, oh, you must choose a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 25. You can add offers to this and say, okay, they're gonna go ahead and choose, you know, this particular set of editing, same thing. For licensing, add an offer, completely replace my use. Save. We're going to go ahead and deliver this to the client and send them an email. Hey, here are here is your um, your images, right? Choose you know X number of images, totally fine by us. So for this particular client, they're supposed to choose a minimum of ten images. You can enforce minimums. You can make this be easier to select. I've got everything turned off and I just want the full grid for demonstration purposes. But basically they choose 20 images. We send them over to DocuSign. DocuSign actually prints all of these images on the legal documents associated with a license and associated with a set of timing. You know, so these particular images will, you know, you have your license for three years or you have your license for five years or you have your license in, into perpetuity, okay? So we see here, we've got all the images. So this image, it's for one unit, et cetera, et cetera. This is all the editing. And then here, now we're starting to print the licensing. Here's your license, here's the image, here's the license, et cetera, et cetera. It's for three years, and we do that for each image. Image one, four, six, et cetera, et cetera, five, three, seven, blah, blah, blah. Prints all the licensing. So now you have a legal document that's beyond reproach. Sign, done. Sons are back here if they want to make more selections. You can see that this particular user purchased this image, purchased the editing for this image and the licensing for this image. Okay. Then next, the marble company, we go ahead and we deliver to them. And we say, okay, we're gonna deliver you some editing as well. We're gonna deliver you some licensing as well. Add in some offers, editing offer, licensing offer. Bam. All right, go ahead and send this out to this particular client. One second, please. I'm in the wrong place. Now for this particular client, this is the marble company. They will see that they're allowed to split the cost of editing for this image with the original client, with the architect. Oh, okay, I'm gonna join owner test. I'm gonna join them for this one, this one, this one. And then they'll also be like, oh, I actually really liked this image because that was my marble that I did. I'll pay full price for the editing of this image and this image and this image, right? But I'll split the cost of editing for these couple of images up here. Okay. They go ahead and check on out. It sends them over to DocuSign. 
DocuSign again prints all the images, all the licensing, everything on the one single document that you will have now forever. But in addition, this is the marble company, so they were joining the cost share. So a lot of the items for this particular user, a lot of the items end up on the cost share because we're sharing the cost of the $2,500 creative fee and we're splitting the cost of editing this image, splitting the cost of editing this image and splitting the cost of editing this image. Obviously no licensing is ever split. Sign. Okay, they can download their images. Okay, images have been downloaded. Bam. Next one, you the six images that they picked. All right. So now where that brings us is now we have SCC has delivered. So we've done the original project setup through you guys, pre-principal photography. 60 days later, we did principal photography. We delivered images through SCC. Post-principal photography, everybody made their images selections. Well, now what we can also do is we can send out the universal link again. So we go back to Alan and we simply say, hey, we want to get all the people who said I'm interested, but I want to see the images first. Our favorite friends, right? The people who are always waiting. And we basically say, okay, we're going to go ahead and go to can be shared. I'm going to create another inheritance for the licensing. And we take this link here. And what this link is, is this is a link that basically takes a user straight to a gallery. And so they send out one big email to all the companies again, or they add it to the original, they do a reply all to the original email. And they're like, hey guys, here are the images. If anybody is interested, go ahead and click them. And they end up on a gallery, right? And they're able to go through all the images, take a look at them, you know, all those things and say, oh, I actually am interested in, you know, purchasing some images from Alan. That would be great. I very much want to do so. And I apologize, this is super ugly with my, you know, very standard fake images, um, but I don't want to use anybody's images on a very public Zoom call. But anyways, they're like, yes, I do want to go ahead and purchase some of these images. I like them. I am the furniture designer and manufacturer. Okay, great. We tell the furniture designer and manufacturer, you must choose a minimum of four. You must choose a minimum of four licenses and we're forcing you to unlimited editorial use. The biggest of all the license. It's $550 a license. You don't get another choice. Now you could give them choices if you wanted to, but you know, they're a furniture manufacturer. They don't need them. They see that they're splitting the cost of $2,500 between three companies. So $2,500 divided by three is $833. Same concept with the architectural photography and editing at $33. And they're paying four licenses of $550. They can see what they would have paid if they had done this themselves, $7,000, they're saving about 55% right now. They go ahead and they proceed. Click on a credit card. They can join this particular client, splitting the cost of those three images. This guy is splitting the cost of this image. And then they can say, oh, I'm the only person who wants these two images. Check out. Again, they're joining the cost share. So this particular client sees $2,500 on the cost share and their, their portion of it is 33. Same thing for these two images that they're gonna split the cost of editing on and done. We started presenting, I started presenting that flow, the whole thing, whole an, an entire project at 1240. And in 19 minutes with very minimal work and automatic routing, the only thing that you had to do as Alan was come in here and create some links and send the links to the architect or send the links to the GC. All the other work was managed by the software to onboard people, get information about them, get their payment method, get their selections, get everything ready to go. So that at the end of the day, and you send your invoices out, it's automatically calculating the correct right amount for these particular users. So if we process these invoices, they're gonna reflect the cost share price as well as their actual licensing. Their legal documents are gonna reflect all the images that they license 
as well as the licensing language to go with it and the expiration dates. And everybody's able to download their images all from one place without ever bothering you. Your total, total work. It took me 18 minutes to go through it, but I was pretending to be three additional companies going through the flow. Your total work on this to get it set up was 10 minutes to prospect hundreds of companies and get them to sign up without any additional effort and energy from your part. And then if there is additional energy and effort that is needed, we can handhold you and help you along the process and pick it up at any moment in time. We have an architectural photographer right now. She's got a four party cost share project down in Austin and she's going to Colorado. We've handled all the communication, all the back and forth with everybody who's trying to sign up for the cost share, answering their questions, letting them know. We have a full support staff ready to go, take care of things so that you don't have to deal with it. That's, that's the business. That's what we've gone ahead and built. And we did it by basically really listening and understanding what your issues are and making a flow and a process that's flexible. And you can type in all of your own information, all your own licensing, all your own offers, all your own pricing, but gives you the structure that allows that all to be split cost and all the, the licensing to be managed seamlessly and easily with just a couple of clicks. So for this particular client, so the architect's original, original cost was $7,000 divided by two because it's two payments was $3,500 per invoice. Their cost is now 2,875, which is a $625 difference. They save $1,200 on their total, total cost of this particular project. Others save a bit more because their licensing was a little bit less expensive. So instead of them paying a full $7,000 to do the entirety of the project, they paid $2,400 or $2,500. Anytime that there is an overpayment, right? So the architects somehow paid more money than they were supposed to pay. For example, five companies decided to join the cost share. And the amount that the architect was supposed to pay was more, the amount of the deposit that the architect did pay was more than the amount that they were supposed to pay in the end. For any time that that happens, a credit memo is issued to their account, which they can use for future use. We employ this as a marketing tactic to say, hey, you have $833 of credit in your account, you wanna book a project for next quarter, and they can use that up whenever they want. Our licensing agreements are extremely strict and that we never, ever issue a refund. It is not allowed for a couple of different reasons. One, it's technically extremely complicated and I just don't want to get into it. Um, but also two, it's good business practice. We're not going to take away our cash flow. That is the general layout of the system. And so basically what ends up happening is we, you do everything that you always do right now in the way that you do it and you get people to sign up for the project. Then we deliver the first universal link to them before pre-principal photography, and we get more people to sign up. Then we deliver the gallery link, the post-principal photography link, the gallery with the pricing. We get more people to sign up there. And then when all is said and done, oh, sorry. If we still want to go after more people, so Norman, this is going back to your question of like, Michael, what are you going to do and like bother more and more and more people and try to get them to cost share and you got their customer information from somebody else, they're not going to be, they're not going to appreciate that. We don't have to do that. We haven't even started that process until this point in time, action item number four, you know, after we've done everything very organically help driven by partners, driven by the architect and their construction partners, but then we can get hands-on. If you want us to go ahead and grab all the contact information, start emailing people, email the people who did express interest, but ended up not converting, then we can get on to do hands-on sales. And then lastly, year afterwards, say you've got a guy, they infringed upon the image. We sent them a universal link. We sent them a gallery like, hey, you infringed upon this image. You know, man, I'm really sorry, but here's the rules. Like you infringed upon it. You got to pay me a licensing fee for it. We also charge an X, Y, and Z. Um, penalty for anybody who infringes without permission. Click this link, go ahead and license these images right now. Honestly, I'm giving you a really good deal. If you don't do this, it's $700 to $135,000 in statutory damages. 
you know, it, it's in your best interest for us to just resolve this amicably now, blah, blah, blah. Just click this link here, the images. It's already set up for the image that you infringe upon, but also I added, you know, 15 extra images from that shoot. If you might be interested in those, go ahead and sign up and check out. They can do that. But lastly, if they don't, then we have the infringement platforms and the infringement platforms exist for a reason, but that ends up playing out years afterwards. That is our overall general function of the software. Um, this is how we do it. And we do genuinely believe we have a very organic, good-hearted, well-intentioned platform that has one goal, which is to bring people together. And when you're doing that, we do not believe you get the same frustration, difficulties. You got my email from X, Y, and Z person. How dare you? We approach it in a much more e-commerce type experience, which is they volunteer information, they volunteer data, they move along the process at the speed that they want to move along the process. And we really don't barge into their life nearly at all to the degree that Pixie does, if not at all, if that's how you want us to help you. Or if you do want us to do it slightly just to tap into that, you know, final two or three clients that might be interested, we can. Um, I want to thank you for um, this in-depth discussion. And uh, I really appreciate the time you've taken and and for all of those that have joined us and and, and stuck with us through <laughs> this discussion. This is a, a, a little bit of a, um, you know, a big lift for a lot of us to to understand. And, and I appreciate that. I'm going to put Michael's uh, contact information in an email that will go out to everyone. And um, uh, though you got that link um, that kind of introduced you to Michael in the initial email announcing this meeting, but I'll put his information in. Michael, if you'd like to add anything at, to that as well, I will incorporate that in this uh, post meeting email. And um, we can go from there. I, I think this has uh, been a really interesting and informative discussion and I appreciate everyone that's been involved. Michael, again, thanks to you for your time. And uh, we will um, meet again next next month. And in the meantime, any of you that'd like to reach out to Michael and uh, pursue this further, I, I would encourage you to do so. I know that I will be as well. Thank you, Alan, for having everyone. us. And thank you everybody for the discussion. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. This has been another episode of A Photographer's Life. If you've enjoyed this program, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. A Photographer's Life is brought to you by the Association of Independent Architectural Photographers. This episode is copyrighted and may not be used in full or in part without the written permission of the AIAP. Please join us again soon for another inside look at the world of professional architectural photography.